in human beings, uh, inbreeding is a case in which people who are closely related have sexual intercourse or mate to produce offsprings and uh, it is mostly associated with incest. For example, have a sex between uh, parents and offsprings or between siblings. Dad, I'm dating my brother. Or uh, between first cousins. So uh, broadly, the two major consequences of inbreeding include um, um, reduction in genetic diversity and acceleration of the expression of undesired uh, genes or the bad genes. So my name is Vincent Suba and you are watching Winam Girl. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe. In this video, we explain in details how inbreeding affects the gene pool of a population and the health risk that has uh, come along with it. So, uh, during sexual reproduction, the chromosomes of male and female sex cells, which are sperms and, and, and eggs, segregates into haploid cells, which later are sought independently uh, during recombination when uh, the cells fertilize to form a zygote. So it then means that both parents contribute half of their genes to the offspring, uh, to the offspring form. So if uh, the parents are related by blood, then it means that they possess identical alleles of a gene, either in homozygous or heterozygous state. So when I say homozygous, it means that the genes, the alleles are all identical. Uh, and uh, heterozygous means that the, the alleles are not identical. One gene is, um, one allele is uh, dominant over the other, so then heterozygous state. Therefore, the offspring will receive these identical alleles from the parent. This will increase the higher levels of homozygosity which reduces the genetic diversity in the gene pool. So, uh, well, on the other hand, when the offspring is formed from parents who are not closely related, these ones have different alleles, then the proportion of heterozygosity will increase. So when the parents are from different uh, uh, families, of course, they are going to have different genes, uh, different alleles coming from these parents. So, for a dominant trait to be expressed, uh, only one copy of that allele is required. While uh, for the recessive, for the recessive gene to be expressed, the two copies of the allele is required. Therefore, increase um, increasing uh, generations of inbreeding will increase the homozygosity of recessive traits that might be lethal. So, for instance, if there is um, a recessive gene that calls for a disease or which is weak, it cannot be expressed in heterozygous state because all, always the dominant um, allele all, is always uh, expressed even when it is just one, uh, one allele present. But if uh, you inbreed for some time, then uh, the population will consist of um, now homozygous uh, recessive genes which if it, if it calls for a disease, for instance, then the whole population will be susceptible to that disease. But again, also, if you don't have, a, if there is no uh, genetic diversity in a population, then it means that uh, you have reduced biological fitness so that if there's a disease outbreak or something happens, then it can wipe the whole population. So um, the implication for, for the increased homozygosity of receiver alleles is the expression of um, undesired or bad traits, which increases the risk of manifestation of a genetic diseases, of a genetic disease, sorry. So in summary, uh, inbreeding reduces the, the mean phenotypic values of some traits related to fitness and physiological efficiency. So in our next video, we'll, we'll explain in details how some of the genetic uh, diseases associated uh, with inbreeding. And we'll also uh, give you examples of the, of the famous uh, inbred families 
21. Thank you.